Hi boys and girls, welcome back. Today we're going to do a little math. Math with shapes and math with position words. I'm going to review a few of the shapes that were kind of tricky for us before we left school. I'm going to hold up a picture right now of a shape and I want you to say out loud what shape you think this is. If you said oval, you are correct. And if you wanted to be super creative, you could say that this is an orange oval that looks a bit like an egg. The next shape I would like to review is this one. So go ahead and say it out loud as soon as you know what it is. If you said rectangle, you are right. Remember a rectangle is made with four straight lines. Two are shorter and two are longer. A rectangle can look like this in the horizontal position, or it can look like this, like a door in the vertical position. And we could use a descriptive word and say that this is a pink rectangle or a hot pink rectangle. And the third and final shape I want to talk about today is this one. If you said it was a diamond, you are right. If you said that it was an orange diamond, you are even more correct. And a diamond is also made up of four straight lines but it's a little bit of slanty lines, kind of like the top of a triangle. And then look at, it's like the bottom of a triangle or even the letter A. I can visualize the letter A if I make a short line between those two points right there. So a diamond has another math name known as a rhombus. That's a fancy name, but if we were playing with our pattern blocks right now, there'd be a blue rhombus and you would sometimes see it in different positions like this in some of those pictures that we would work on where we'd fill up the picture with different shapes. Well, it's not just a quick review today. We actually need to practice making those shapes. And so you're going to need two more things and you might need to pause the video to go get them. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is your paint bag. The one that looks like this. Mine is looking a bit brown because I've mixed and played with all the colors so much. You're going to need your paint bag and then you're also going to need your Play-Doh. Hmm. Both things begin with a p, p, p sound. So go ahead and pause the video and go get your paint bag and your Play-Doh. Now that you're back, we're going to start with our paint bag. I'm going to hold mine up so you can see it, but I would like you to put yours on a flat surface. Whether it was the ground or a table, that would be fine. But we're going to practice drawing those shapes. And I'm going to go back and try to draw my oval first. I'm going to smooth out my paint bag so that there's no bumps or any bruises or anything like that, no holes, because you know I like it to be a little perfect. And we're going to make an oval. An oval can be positioned lots of different ways, but the first way we're going to try to make it is the way that we've seen it the most, which is laying on its side. An oval reminds me of a squished circle. Notice that I started at the top of my shape, that I went from the right to the left, and then I'm going around like this. Parents, if you're watching with your child, make sure they're going from right to left and that they're going from top to bottom. Those are key components when writing, making shapes, or doing anything. Let's try this oval one more time. So I've just smushed my paint around so that it's a blank slate again. We're going to start at the top and almost go from to each side of the bag. If you kind of visualize going from side to side of the bag when you make it, made an oval. Nice job boys and girls. How about we try those rectangles? Smooth out your bag again. I'm putting mine down on my lap to smooth it out. And now let's make a rectangle that looks like a door. I think that's easy because look it's a big line down like you need for lots of your letters. A little line across, another big line down, and then you close up the rectangle like a door. You want to try that again? Yeah, let's do it again. Smooth out your paint bag, move it all around. Here we go. Straight line down, little line across, another straight line down, making it even with both sides to the best of your ability, and then closing the gap. Now, that happens to be a rectangle that looks like a door or vertical. Let's try to make one that's horizontal, that's laying on its side. This one's a little bit trickier because your long line has to go across your paper and sometimes we get slanty with that. But go from bag to bag, end of bag to end of bag or side to bag and go across and then go down 
And then here, I might want to go over here and go down and then make my line join there. That one's not as easy for me to do. Might be tricky for you too. But that is a horizontal rectangle. You can try that as many times as you want, and you can pause this video before you're going on if you want to try to do it again. The last shape I want to make for you is that diamond. Now, the diamond is tricky, and I'm going to show you a good solution for a pre-K kid to make a diamond in an easy way. First, you want to do a slanty line down like you're making an A, and then a slanty line down like you're making the other side of an A, kind of a fat A or the beginning of a triangle. And then I'm going to turn my paint bag upside down and I'm going to do another triangle that connects to that line and connects to the line I previously made. Now that one's not an even diamond, but it's still a diamond because it has four lines that are slanty or diagonal and it kind of looks like a kite, doesn't it? Let's try that one again. Go ahead, erase your bags. And when you're ready, let's try making a rectangle, not a rectangle, Mrs. Anderson, a diamond. So we'll use slanty line, slanty line, turn our bag around, slanty line, slanty line. And because this is paint, it's moving as I turn it around. But there, there's a diamond. Excellent. You can put your paint bag to the side now because we're going to try making those same three shapes with our Play-Doh now. So go ahead and get out your Play-Doh that I sent in your April take-home bags and take a piece off of it. Mush it up with your hands, massage it a little bit. My blue Play-Doh is doing pretty good. I hope yours is too. I can see it getting a little crumbly, so it might need a little bit of moisture. You might need to um, have a mom or dad help you get your fingers a teeny bit wet and then add a little bit to it. If it's getting a little crumbly, the little bit of water will help it. Once you have a good hunk ready to go, we're going to practice rolling it out like a snake and see if we can make those three shapes one more time. Last time we did Play-Doh, I turned my camera so that you could see my hands and hear my voice, but you couldn't see my face. And I'm going to do the same thing. So here we go. Now you'll notice I have a white Play-Doh plate today, and I did that because I thought you could see the blue better on it. I'm going to put that to the side for a minute, take another hunk of Play-Doh, and I'm going to roll it out like a snake. The first shape I want to try to make is an oval. So I'm going to need a nice, long snake. I'm putting pressure in different spots so that I don't have a fat snake in one spot and a skinny snake in another. And it's okay sometimes to pause the video or notice that I stop talking for a minute so that I can really focus on what I'm doing. That is an extremely long snake. Yours might not be that long, but you want it to be quite large. And then we're going to try to turn it into an oval. Now, that looks like an oval to me, but it probably doesn't to you yet. So I'm going to get my Play-Doh plate, and I'm going to put it on my Play-Doh plate. Now I don't want it to be a circle, I want it to look like an egg, and I'm pushing it down only so that it sticks to my Play-Doh plate, so when I hold it up, that should be an oval. Feel free to pause the video and keep trying till you get yours right. When you're done, we're going to try the next shape. I think I can even reuse this long snake to make my rectangle. So when I make my rectangle, how many lines does a rectangle have? If you said four or four, you are absolutely right. We need some short ones, and they need to be about the same size, some short lines, and then we need some longer lines. Again, when you play with Play-Doh, it's not perfect. And moms and dads, kids are just learning. They don't need to be perfect at all. They just need to try. Look. I have some uneven lines there, so I'm just going to smush it so it's a little bit the same length, and I'm going to add my fourth piece. So notice what I did. Now I've got a little piece here that doesn't look like a perfect corner, and that's okay because it's Play-Doh, and we're just four and five years old. We're just practicing making things and manipulating things with our hands. 
feel free to pause the video again and see if you can make a rectangle with two short lines and two long lines. And remember, if I rotate my Play-Doh plate, you can see that I have a door or a vertical rectangle. Now I have one more shape to make, and this time I am going to mush up my Play-Doh a little bit and roll it out one more time to make my diamond. Diamonds have how many sides? Oh, if you said four, you are right. So we're going to need four pieces of Play-Doh, but this time most diamonds have all the same length. So I'm going to show you a trick. And if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't, that's okay, because there's always more than one way to do things. I'm going to fold my Play-Doh until I can get four equal pieces. And I'm unfolding it right now because it wasn't equal. And oh no, it broke, but that's okay, it's Play-Doh. I can try again and roll it again. All right, so let's see. One, two, yes, that'll be about right. And then if I break it right where the fold is, I have about four equal pieces. Turn them back into straight lines. Again, moms and dads, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually better if we aren't perfect and if we do it by ourselves and if we always get help. Now I'm going to try on my Play-Doh plate to make you a diamond. There's that top part that I was doing on the paint bags that looks a little bit like an A. If I put a line there, it'd be a triangle. And now I'm going to go diagonally in. This is a spatial and visual activity as well because you have to be able to kind of see where it would go without there being lines. That's a tricky skill to learn. And there, there is my diamond. Excellent. I'm going to turn the video camera back to my face now. And one more thing I want to talk to you about is position words. So I'm going to take this diamond on this plate and I'm going to ask you right now if this diamond is in front of me or is it behind me? If you said in front of me, you are absolutely right. So I'm going to now take another shape and take my cell phone, which is a what? If you said rectangle, you are right. I'm going to ask, is my rectangle now, or my cell phone, in front of me? Can you see it? Or is it behind me? If you said it was behind me, you are right. It is behind my back. My rectangle was behind me. In front and behind are great position words that are actually math terms that kids need to know. Those are easy things to practice when you are doing anything in the kitchen, uh, lining up socks or putting laundry away or doing some chalk drawing outside. Easy things to practice. Two other position words besides in front and behind are above and below. And so now I'm going to be a little silly, and I'm going to hold um, this Play-Doh, this ball of Play-Doh, that I'm going to turn into a fat-looking egg, okay? So this would be like my oval. So is my oval above me, or is it below me? Here we go. If you said it's above me, you are right. My oval, or my egg, is above me. Now, to be below me, it would have to be where? Yeah, if you said below, like bow down by my feet, that would be exactly where it is. And you can't see that. But above is taller than something, and below is lower than something. Some easy things for children to practice on a regular basis. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you paused the video a few times to practice making those shapes. And I hope that you had some fun. Feel free to keep your Play-Doh out and keep making different shapes because remember, those three we did were just the tricky ones. There's other ones too, and I'm sure that you and your family can talk about that. Have a great day, boys and girls. Thanks for joining me again. Feel free to take pictures of your, of your Play-Doh or your paint bags and you doing shapes with them or position words and send them to me. I'd love to see them. Have a great day. Stay safe. Don't forget to wash those hands. See you soon. Bye.